Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are going to be looking at the female reproductive system. I'm going to go through the major structures that you need to be able to identify as well as their functions and then we'll round this off with some terminology recap. Now if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you're looking for some extra help coming up with exams, why don't you get a copy of my study guide, which is available both under the membership on YouTube. So if you are a member, you get a free copy of that. Or if you want to purchase your own copy of it, you can get it on my website, missangler.co.za. Now let's get into the video. I just want to quickly break down some misconceptions about the female reproductive system and the structures within the female reproductive system that we often misidentify. So I want you to know that when we use the word vagina, we are actually talking about this internal section over here. And that part is actually not visible with the um, like, to, to like look on the outside, if you will. Generally, when people use the word vagina, they are talking about um, the outside part of, of the female reproductive system. But that's actually not what it is. The vagina is internal um, and it is a birthing canal. It is the, the canal that babies will move down and through and out. It's also where sexual intercourse takes place. But the vagina is internal. What often you are talking about if you use the word vagina and you think you're using the word correctly is you're actually talking about this outer region of the female reproductive system which is called the vulva so let's not confuse the two together um they are not the same thing but i think generally you know in everyday life we sort of use it interchangeably but in an exam it's important to know that it's not actually the same thing and I'd like this video to also uh, elaborate on some of the key things we need to know for our exams on the female reproductive system, because often this is actually the hardest question in the exam. Now, you can also see in this photograph here how the uterus is actually positioned. Um, it sits just above the bladder. So this is the bladder over here. Here is the uterus itself, along with the ovaries and fallopian tubes. But I'm going to get into that now of what they are and what they do. So let's get into the major structures and functions that we need to know, starting off with a structure we've already mentioned earlier, which is the vagina, which is this area over here. Now, the vagina is a birthing canal. Um, it is a muscular canal, which babies move through when giving birth. It is also the a reproductive organ that receives the penis during sexual intercourse. It is where semen is deposited, but it's also really important to know that the penis doesn't go further than the vagina. It cannot move past the vagina because there's actually a physical barrier over here that stops the penis from going higher. And there's a many reasons why, but the main reason is for to protect against mechanical damage that the penis may cause. And so there is a small opening into the uterus, which we're going to talk about now. And so let's actually then go straight into that. And let's remove this line here. And this little opening or this little bit over here, this is called the cervix. Now, the cervix is the opening to the uterus. Um, it is also a protected area um, and it only allows a really really small amount of fluid to move through it it's only about a half a centimeter if that wide um, and so it allows menstrual blood to come out but it also allows semen to go in but remember the penis does not go past the cervix um, then moving into a much bigger structure that we can identify from this picture which is the uterus which is this whole structure over here and the uterus is a muscular organ um, it's made out of myometrium, that's the layer, the muscle layer. I'm going to come back to myometrium soon. Um, and it's where pregnancy takes place. And um, it is where an embryo will grow and attach on the walls. Um, and if you haven't watched my implantation video, you should go and watch that now. I've, I've linked it above now, um, showing you all the things you need to know about fertilization and then implantation. But this is where it happens in the uterus. Um, and the uterus, if you didn't know this, also expands a hundred times bigger when you are pregnant. Um, and the original size of the uterus is only about the size of a pear, 
which is really small if you think about how big it can become. And it needs to become that big, obviously, for growing a human. Then moving on to our next structure is going to be the layers that make up the uterus. So the first layer I want to bring your attention to is this fine like foldy layer you know it's a little bumpy there and that layer you may already be familiar with the name it is the endometrium now the endometrium is the lining of the uterus um, and it is where the embryo attaches and it sheds once every 28 days the endometrium is the only thing that you are losing once every 28 days and the reason why I say that is because people confuse the next label very often and they say this word by accident and they shouldn't and that is this inner layer this thick pink inner layer which is known as the myometrium and I've actually just mentioned it to you now the myometrium is the muscular layer of the uterus and that is the part that contracts during childbirth and active labor it's also the part that contracts during menstruation it's what sheds the lining so please grade 12s i really need you to be careful with the way you use these words you cannot shed the wall of the uterus if you use those words shed the wall it literally means that the uterus is coming out of you that's not what's happening. It is the lining of the uterus. And the lining, as I just mentioned to you now earlier, is this here, the endometrium. That is the lining of the uterus. So let's not confuse the two. The myometrium never leaves the body. Only if you have your uterus removed will, of course, then the myometrium come with it because that is what the uterus is. It's made out of myometrium. Right, let's move on then. To our next structure and let's go into this tube and you have two of them one on either side and i think we all know what these are but this is the fallopian tube and the fallopian tube is the site of fertilization so that's what makes it really important this is where sperm cells will have to swim and they have to go really far if you think about it because they they can't go past the cervix so they've got to go up from the vagina, they've got to go past the cervix, they've got to go into the uterus, and then they've got to go either to the left or to the right and into the fallopian tube, which is where fertilization takes place. So it's actually quite a long journey, and it must happen in the fallopian tube. Now, to help this process, the fallopian tubes are lined with cilia, and if you can't remember what cilia are, they're those long finger-like brush structures that stick out of the cells, and they move, and they help move the egg along. Which brings me to, where does the egg come from? Now, the egg is going to be coming from this structure over here, which we know as the ovary. And you have also two ovaries, one on each side. And you actually ovulate um, from each ovary once every month. So each ovary takes a turn, if you will. And it's the site of eugenesis or oogenesis, and it's where we make eggs, and it secretes estrogen and progesterone. So that's its two major functions. Now, the last and final structure we need to know is cut off a little bit on this picture, but you'll notice here by the ovary, there's like these like little finger-like pieces that seem to be sitting around the ovary. Now, what you can't actually tell in this picture is the ovary is not actually touching the fallopian tube. There's actually a space in between the two. So when you ovulate, your egg goes through an empty, open space. It must fly through that space and land into the fallopian tube. Now, to help that process, there are those little finger-like um, structures that are, are growing out of the fallopian tube, trying to, to grab hold of the egg and the, fallopi uh, and the, and the ovum, right? And so those little finger-like structures are called infundibulum. I know they've got quite an uh, interesting name and spelling, but the purpose of the infundibulum um, is to link your ovary to the fallopian tube and it also attracts the ovum to the fallopian tube. So they actually move, they pull the egg towards the fallopian tube so that we are successful and that's so that fertilization can take place. 
Now, in terms of structures, these are all you actually need to know and their functions. This will probably be the easiest part of a test or an exam. It's really not going to be a very difficult question. Remember, the hardest questions you're going to interact with are, of course, going to be the menstrual cycle questions and the hormone regulatory questions, which, of course, I have linked the video up above on the menstrual cycle. Now that you can go and watch that, if you need a bit of a refresher on how do the hormones produced within the ovary affect the endometrium and uh, the process of eugenesis. Now, as always, at the end of my videos, I like to do a little bit of a recap for terminology. Uh, remember, you are only as good as your terminology. If your terminology is not on point, you're not going to be able to express yourself in exams and tests. And so it's important to know these and you can use these for flashcards and for revision. But the first thing that we mentioned was the vagina and the fact that the vagina is an internal birthing canal. It's the internal structures, not the outside. We can't see the vagina on the outside. Um, and it is a muscular canal. We then spoke about the uterus, which again is also a muscular organ. Um, it is responsible for um, housing an embryo when it's growing into a fetus and a baby, but it is also responsible for menstruation and contracting and pushing out menstrual blood. Which leads me to the two layers of the uterus. The endometrium is the layer we regrow every 28 days. It is the layer we lose during menstruation. Whereas the myometrium is the permanent layer. It's made out of muscle. It doesn't go anywhere. And the myometrium is the part of the uterus that is contracting and pushing out the endometrium during menstruation. Then we also spoke about the cervix, which is the opening to the uterus. It uh, prevents any mechanical damage happening inside of the uterus. We spoke about the fallopian tubes. There are two of them, and they are the site of fertilization. They're lined with cilia to help move the ovum. We also then spoke about the infundibulum, which are these finger-like structures that extend and like they look like little fingers or hands reaching out towards the ovaries to capture the ovum when you ovulate. And last but not least, the ovary. The ovary is responsible for um, producing eggs and sex hormones, and it is the site of eugenesis. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye!